Now, average rate of change, while interesting in its own right, is not very complicated and it has limited uses. Um, Newton ran into issues when he was working on his theory of gravity and trying to predict planet, the positions of the planets in their orbits. And that average rate of change caused too wide a range of error in his calculations. He needed to actually discuss instantaneous rate of change rather than average. Uh, the, a similar thing happened to Leibniz, but he was dealing with fluid motion, that the average rates of change for the fluid moving, the error caused by it was too great for what he wanted to do. So he also independently was saying, wait a minute, I need to figure out a way of getting instantaneous rate of change. Well, the problem here is that for an instantaneous rate of change, I don't have two points. So if I look at the exact same function, an object falling from rest gives me a displacement function of y equals 16x squared. And I graph that. But I want to find the instantaneous velocity at the third second. So here's three. I plug that in, 3 squared is 9, 16 times 9 is 144. Well, because this is a rate of change, I still want to deal with slope. But to find slope, I need two points. And I, right now, I only have one point. So the way Newton and Leibniz got around this is they said, you know what? let's just pick a second point that's on this curve. But I'm going to pick it in such a way that I can move it. So what they both said, they used slightly different notation than what we do now. But the idea is we control the independent variable, meaning we can move left and right. We don't get to control the up and down because that's the dependent variable. But I can control left and right. So they said from this three, Let's move over a distance of h. So h is the horizontal distance between our two points. So this means that now my x-coordinate is h units away from the 3, or 3 plus h. And I can now graph the point that goes with that x value. Well, the x coordinate is 3 plus h. If I want to find the y coordinate, I plug 3 plus h in for the x. And I have 16 times the quantity, 3 plus h squared. Now, is that h annoying to see in there? Yes, it is. But it's incredibly helpful to us, as you're going to see later on. So now I do have two points, and I can find the slope between those two points. So if I do change in y over change in x, I have the 16 times the quantity 3 plus h squared minus 144 over the 3 plus h minus 3. And if I go through, oops, sorry, and simplify this, I have 16 times 9 plus 6h plus h squared. If I FOIL out, oops, minus the 144. 3 plus h minus 3 is just going to be h. This gives me 144 plus 96h plus 16h squared minus 144 all over h. The 144s cancel, I have 96h plus 16h squared all over h. Well, because I have h's in both terms, I can actually divide the entire numerator by h, and I get 96 plus 16h. So what this is actually telling me is that my slope is going to depend upon how far away the, my green point is from the blue one. Because remember, h is the distance between those two points, the horizontal distance. But now they said, 
I don't really want the slope between two points. I want the slope at one point. So they said, well, I created this green point so I can move it. What I want to do is I want to move this point closer and closer to the blue point until it's so close that it might as well be on top of it. They might as well be the same point. So let's focus first on that concept of I want to move closer. So if I want to move the green point closer in calculus, that is a limit. So I need to take the limit of my 96 plus 16 H. Well, the H is what's going to be changing. As I move closer, this horizontal distance between 3 and 3 plus H is getting smaller. In other words, H, the distance between them, is approaching 0. Well, if I do the limit as H approaches 0, what that's saying is I'm moving this green point until it is so close to the blue one that I can't actually measure how close they are. They're so close. They, they get close enough that we're saying, you know what, they're close enough that we treat them like they're just one point instead of two. Well, this is a limit I can evaluate by substitution by plugging zero in for H, and I get 96, and then my units are coming from the change in Y over change in X, feet per second, and that is our instantaneous rate of change at the third second.